Good day friends, I am Dr. A.S.K. Gupta and I am going to demonstrate to you a case of high UGR in a patient who is around 33 weeks of gestation by the last menstrual period but on actual examination by the ultrasound her gestational age by the ultrasound comes to be around 29 weeks, 5 days. So the obstetrician has considered the possibility of intrauterine growth retardation and this patient has been sent to us for the ultrasound examination. When we started looking at the patient, we found that the amniotic fluid in this patient is normal. Usually in the patients with the IUGR, the amniotic fluid may be less. But here the AFI was 13.5 centimeters, suggesting that uh, the kidneys are normally functioning and the heart is also normally functioning. And we could find that the bladder of the patient is very well filled up and there is no issue with the kidneys and the kidneys were normal in size. We tried to look at the heart, we found that the heart is occupying one third of the thoracic cavity and the uh, the heart is also not enlarged. So probably there are structurally the patient does not have any structural defect so as to cause the IUGR. When we measured the various parameters, we found that the various parameters are falling short and the BPD the, is giving a uh, gestational age of, age of around 31 weeks while the abnormal circumference is giving a gestational age of around 28 weeks and the femoral length is also giving a smaller gestational age of, of around 29 weeks. In such cases when the IUGR occurs in the third trimester the HC AC, AC ratio should be seen because the head circumference uh, is more in this patient the, the, and the abdominal circumference becomes less and you can see that the HC AC ratio is more than the normal you can see that the SCAC ratio is 1.23 while the normal is up to 1.2 and I'll just show you the graphs and the various graphs show that this patient is having a lower gestational age of uh, 29 weeks, um, 4 days and the gestational age by the LMP is 33 weeks, 2 days. These are the graphs of the patient and you can see that all the graphs they show that the respective parameters are uh, lower than the standard deviation and here, here you can see that this is the AC and the uh, abdominal circumference is much lower than the two standard deviation and here you can see that this is the effective fetal weight which is also much lower than the plus minus two standard deviations. And if I see the FL, then FL also falls to be in the lower category and the head circumference also falls in the lower category than the standard deviation. So we are dealing with probably a case of uh, IUGR and this patient needs to be urgently intervened so as to save the fetus. This is the urinary bladder of the patient uh, and it is pretty well filled. It means the kidneys are functioning normally. So it is not the structural cause in the kidneys which is giving rise to the IUGR, it is probably the nutritional cause or the vascular cause which is leading to the IUGR in this patient. If you look at the uh, umbilical cord, we find that it is a three vessel umbilical cord uh, and all the three vessels are normally aligned and it is normally uh, inserted into the placenta and the placenta is of normal size. Here you can see that the placenta is normal, the heart is also normal, it is a uh, LBOT, RBOT and four chambers are pretty well seen so it is quite unlikely that this is the heart structural defect which is given against to IUGR. When we perform the um, color Doppler scan of the left uterine artery we find that the resistive index of the left uterine artery is resistive index of the left uterine artery is increased usually the resistive index should be less than 5 but here we find that the resistive index of the left uterine artery is 0.62 and the PI is 1.15 and there is a diastolic notch also here you can see that there is an diastolic notch which signifies that there is vascular compromise in this patient. When we performed the vascular Doppler of the right uterine artery we also found that the right uterine artery is also showing a resistive flow pattern and when we measure we find that the resistive index of the right uterine artery is 0.75 Usually it has to be less than 0.5 and the PI is also increased 1.60 and there is a diastolic notch in the uterine flow on the right hand side also. It means that this patient is having a vascular compromise, the vascular flow to the placenta and the fetus are compromised giving rise to the IUGR. Probably this patient might be having uh, the pregnancy induced hypertension or other causes which need to be investigated. 
Now let us try to measure the resistive index or the color Doppler flow into the umbilical artery and we find that the umbilical artery flow a resistive pattern, shows a resistive pattern and the resistive index of the umbilical artery is 0.73. Usually the resistance index of the umbilical artery is 0.6 and the PEI is also 1.25. Suggesting that there is a resistance to the flow of the blood into the umbilical arteries and it suggests that the patient is having IUGR because of the vascular reasons. Now trying to measure the color Doppler scan of the middle cerebral artery, you can see this is the circle of bilis and this is the middle cerebral artery on one side, this is the middle cerebral artery on the other side and we measure these cerebral artery flow then we find that these Resistive index of the cerebral artery, middle cerebral artery is decreased. Usually the resistive index of the cerebral artery is more than 0.8. Here we find the resistive index is decreased and the PI is also decreased. And it means that there is a cerebral sparing effect because of the decreased uh, vascular supply and there is a, this cerebral sparing effect is suggestive that the fetus is in IUGR and this fetus should be saved as to save this fetus the mother needs to be given active measures and in case the things do not improve the fetus needs to be extracted and managed in the ICU. This is the color Doppler scan of the ductus venosus and we find that the color Doppler scan of the ductus venosus is normal. What does it signify? During the vascular compromise it is the maternal arteries which get compromised first then the fetal arteries and then the fetal veins. It means that the uterine arteries will have a compromised flow in the first as in this patient then the umbilical artery will start showing changes and then the um, and, um, then the uh, ductus venosus and the umbilical vein. This fetus is showing changes in the uterine arteries. It, we can also detect the change in the, the umbilical artery it suggests that this patient is having the middle stage of the IUGR and vascular compromise. In case the changes they reach the ductus venosus and the umbilical vein also, then the things become worse. And so the action should be taken at this stage. I hope we have been able to produce a good case of IUGR. And in case you like our video, please do subscribe to our channel. Do not forget to press the like button and share the video among large number of friends so that maximum number of people can benefit it. Thank you very much.